That didn't go. Dig yourself out. Shit. Okay, we're gonna have to do some more digging. So I've done a bit more digging and I'm going to leave slip start off because that was spinning the wheels up too much. So I'm gonna get a bit of momentum up this bit, if possible. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. It's out, hallelujah. <laughs> that will teach me not to buy winter tyres. <sighs> Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. It's not quite as easy going as it was on my previous snow video, which was winter snow problem, comedically titled because my little trip to McDuff and back was not causing me any particular issues. As you've already seen this morning's longer trip, I had to dig the car off the driveway because it would not go up the slope, the gravel driveway, out of my house. And that's despite the fact that it did it absolutely fine yesterday. So we did have some more snow down overnight and it's obviously frozen on top of some of the other snow that had come and I'm assuming that was the problem. Suddenly the snow which I had driven on yesterday down and back um, had impacted and had frozen and then some more snow on top of it. So my big snow shovel came in handy and after a few attempts we were away. And to be honest I could have made it on at least one of the previous attempts. The problem I had was that I was on slip start mode and the wheel spin that I was getting was helpful for traction. The concern I had was that if it started to bite and bite hard, the car would rapidly smash itself into my gate. So better to go back down, dig a little bit more, turn it off <laughs> and then have another go. North of Aberdeen now on the A90 and it is definitely slushy. Um, entertainingly, I've, well, it's just gone off, but for most of it, I've got the little steering wheel symbol telling me that auto um, steer is available. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Am I gonna stick full autopilot on and let the car try and drive through this? I mean, it's disappeared off again now and come back, but that would be madness. What I am doing is I am doing very gentle inputs to steering and brake and I'm trying to maintain good distances between me and other vehicles which is more than I can say for some other drivers. There's people driving up and down here with no lights on, there's people driving up and down here tailgating each other. It's absolutely crazy. What on earth are they thinking? It's winter conditions, there's been a reasonable amount of snow down on the ground and there was an accident on here a few hours ago this morning which closed the road and you've still got people driving like absolute burks and I don't get it. 
is there a, is there a stupidity level that goes with the way that some people drive or do they quite simply not think or have any concepts at all about what conditions are like and therefore what you should be doing. Oh, the other point to note, auto wipers. And I don't know whether it's because of the last update that we've had, but they are absolute gash. They are doing nothing. I am having to manually switch them on all the time now. So I have no idea what the latest update has done, but for whatever reason, they've largely stopped working. So I'm just doing it manually. So the <laughs> some really interesting updates have just landed. Things like Apple Music, which is great for, for Apple fans, um, but I have no idea what's happened to auto wipers. Uh, they're just not working for me at the moment. Okay, this is slushy now. So what we want to try and do at least is to get past the truck perhaps and then pull back in because honestly this is not really good for me to even try and come out of this because of the amount of slush that's here. So what I'm going to do is hold station as we go up the hill at least and follow the ruts and then as we go over the top we'll see what it's like. Okay, okay, where are we? Is there enough room to go past the truck? I'm not entirely sure if I'm honest, if I'm following the rut. What I don't want to do is end up being taken off and into the back of the truck. So I think what I'm going to do is ease my way out of it. Oh, snowplow, snowplow. <laughs> and then follow the truck. What I'm hoping is that the road clears a little bit further up. I'm quite happy to do 45, 50 miles an hour if that's all the road is good for, as long as I get where I'm going. Um, but it would be good if it cleared a little bit. As you can see, we are now down to a single lane. Uh, lane two is completely obscured by snow, and lane one has also got its own wide ruts. So this is the northern section of the A90 Aberdeen uh, bypass, and um, yeah, we'll um, we'll see how we get on. The road is definitely open and having checked before we left uh, there's traffic going all the way down it obviously it's just going quite slowly the good news is because there's been so many heavy goods vehicles down here i've actually got a really clear view of the tarmac so i'm not driving on slush particularly and i can hear the tarmac despite what it looks like so it's not anything like as bad as it might look at first glance this looks frankly a wee bit skatey but the road looks okay just to get past this truck, which I'm going to do. And yes, I have got the window open because I think it's quite useful to be able to hear um, the tarmac below me. Once again, auto wipers, and I'll just turn them off. Turn them back on. Are they actually going to work now? Yeah, okay. Because they were not doing anything at all. Anything at all. A little earlier. Okay, I can't really tell. Okay, the white line's there. I can just about see that. Uh, it keeps popping back up with auto steer. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> we're not going with auto steer. So I'm doing 30, 30, 35 miles an hour and it feels okay. I mean, again, it's slushy, but it's not dramatically awful. You know, I've not felt the car step at all out of line since I got off the driveway. There is a car on the other side who has obviously fairly recently had a wee bit of a spin and smashed into the barrier. <sighs> That's the second crash car that I've seen on uh, on here in the last, I don't know what, five, six miles, which really is a warning that it's not good. So I'm not going to do anything silly. Go back onto notch two on the wipers. I really wish auto wipers were working better. That would be a good thing right now. It is a bit of a distraction having to go through the menu to change the wiper settings because Auto Wipers has decided to give up. I'm sure he does want to come out. Let's keep clearing past him. Right, my passing speed past these trucks is a little bit high just in case one of them has to come out. So I'm going to ease it back. Oh, good. There's somebody ploughing. Well, that's why lane two's okay because there's someone actually ploughing it. So I'm going to need to drop back in. And the truck behind me is letting me in. So 
thank you very much, Mr. Truck. To give you a flash of the uh, hazards to say thank you. And we'll carry on. <laughs> well, this has been entertaining so far. I hope you're still watching. Well, of course you're still watching because I'm talking to you. But yeah, this is um, this has been interesting so far. I'm back on autopilot and I am demonstrating to you just how bad auto wipers have gone. There is no reason at all, none, for these to be going the way that they are. Uh, what on earth are they doing? So are we just slowing down as this guy is turning off? But why are they going at full pelt? Why? I can be behind trucks being absolutely sprayed with water straight onto the screen so you can't see anything at all and auto wipers sit there and they're off and now I'm driving along in the dry and what are they doing? They're just going. It's absolutely batty. I can't for the life of me understand what has happened with this um, last software update which um, I downloaded uh, the other day. What is happening? Why are they still going? I then need to keep washing the screen because it's smearing dirt everywhere and then it just carries on. And the problem is when you're on autopilot you cannot turn auto wipers off. You cannot. So I'm in a position where because I've effectively got to keep swooshing the screen with water because it's constantly smearing because it's constantly going it really does make using autopilot largely difficult, you know, pretty damn difficult. What is this guy doing? Why is he suddenly... Mm. Right, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to... Oh, new indicators, watch this. So you change lane. And then they cancel. So this is the new indicator thing, where, let's get these stupid wipers off. The new thing with the indicators though is good. So wipers, don't know what they've done, it's bad. Indicators, really good. You indicate to change lane and it keeps the uh, indicators on as long as it needs for you to get into the other lane. And then using Tesla Vision, it then cancels the indicators. So Tesla Vision is coming up with a whole load of grief at the moment online, um, Twitter especially, because of the... Um, lack of ultrasonic sensors on cars currently being shipped and Tesla Vision not working properly. I agree, that is really bad. But the new indicators thing is really good. So if that's the future where the car is reading its environment around it and it's acting accordingly on the controls, then that's a good thing. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad. You've just got to think about what it's going to be when it's rolled out properly but at the moment i am driving along manually because i can't go on autopilot because auto wipers are possessed by the devil i'm at the supercharger at edinburgh it's actually quite busy here today there was a decent number of stalls busy when i got here but again no problem pulling in it's tesla it always works and it's almost always available um i was originally being told it wanted me to stop at Addiston on the A1 in Northumbria. I wasn't even sure I was going that way and I'm still not. So what I'm doing, because I'm having a break, and to be brutally honest I was chatting with the guys in the service centre, um, I'm just letting the thing charge up. So I'll probably let it go to, I don't know, maybe 80%, something like that, uh, and then we'll carry on. I'm now east of Edinburgh on the coast route. I've decided that going um, A68 over Carter Bar is probably not the most sensible idea, so I'm going to follow the coast. Um, but something miraculous has happened. Look, I am on autopilot with auto wipers, and it is not frantically wiping the screen the way it was doing before I stopped in Edinburgh. Okay, we're going to try something which I believe is in the Easter egg settings. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and the car has turned into <laughs> Santa and the reindeer and it's snowing. Because why not? It's Christmas. 
89 miles since I last charged up in Edinburgh, 90 miles now. I'm done 288 watt hours per kilometer, and that's all been 60, 70 miles an hour. Um, and there's been a little bit of snow back on the ground. I mean, I've not been going through slush particularly, but the dry road that we had before, it's gone damp at the very least. So look, that's really good efficiency. You know, that is my average that I've been getting since I collected the car in mid-September. So considering that it's one degree and considering that I have, you know, not been, not been dawdling and that the road is a bit damp, I think that's absolutely brilliant. You know, the winter efficiency, I don't think is anything like as bad as a lot of people are suggesting, probably including myself earlier in this video and on my previous video, the uh, um, winter snow problem video. Well, I mean, I think the point I was making there was that you don't have to worry particularly about uh, efficiency in the winter. It's not dramatically bad. And look, this is playing out. This is even better efficiency than I was getting before. Sure, if it gets really cold and you're driving around in, you know, minus five, minus 10, and I did, then your efficiency does drop uh, fairly, you know, fairly comfortably. I, at one point on uh, one trip, I did, uh, what, 17 or so miles round trip. And I think I got 420, 425, I think, watt hours per mile that's not good but that was absolutely perishingly freezing so efficiency is is not the not the end of the world when it's cold dropping down now into the time tunnel and my efficiency is still absolutely excellent so since we set off from the supercharger in edinburgh i'm on 278 watt hours per mile that is almost the same as my long-term average at 286 so the the cold and it's okay it's warmed up a little bit it's now three degrees but you know it's not anything like as bad as you might think driving an ev especially a tesla in colder weather you know there's still the snow on the ground outside for god's sake it's not warm and that's supposed to do bad things to the battery and bad things to efficiency and yet here we are you know it's it's not causing a problem at all i am still slightly agog at the christmas display <laughs> that we now have on the car the car as santa's sleigh with reindeer okay that's one thing but then other cars are shown as reindeer trotting at different speeds along the road and when you're going at, at you know at motorway speed they're trotting quite quickly um, to the point where trying to keep up with the legs is a challenge so it is it entertains me it is quite funny um, it might not entertain everybody and let's be honest there's no need for it at all it's just a bit of fun and it's the kind of Tesla madness that just makes me smile we are coming down into Stockton on Tees um, it's been a really fun trip um, the craziness with the snow closer to home then contrasts quite a bit with the much calmer conditions as we've got further south one last look at efficiency on this and yeah i'm actually running below my normal efficiency so since we left the supercharger i'm on 276 watt hours per mile which is lower than the 286 which is my average so the total for this 332 mile so far trip is 308 watt hours per mile i think the point i've made a couple of times already is don't listen to everything you hear about how evs are going to be absolutely terrible when it's cold it ain't necessarily so and as i said in my uh, previous video you know, winter snow problem it really isn't a problem so don't be put off by it the cable connected now we've got to make the mer network charge point work
So this is app based. So what I need to do is to go into my large number of charging apps and find Mer, which is down here. Okay, current location, Hampton by Hilton, good. Okay, so which of these are we on? <sighs> right, we are on the one that isn't actually in use, so we'll click on that and we're on the right hand one. No, it's the left hand one, isn't it? Because it's looking at it that way. And then swipe this bar. Let's see if that now goes. Well, it's just clicked. Job done. And they've actually fixed the app. Last time I did this and parked here, the swipe to stop bar wasn't actually there. <laughs> and the good thing about this is it's 25p a kilowatt hour, which is pretty decent to be fair. Um, they charge a lot more for some of their faster charges. Anyway, I'm here at my hotel and the Tesla here is absolutely filthy after that trip. So don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon. I do new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, as well as some Monday musings now and then. There will be, of course, another video as I head home in a few days time, doing a different route, different charging strategies. We'll see about economy and I hope to see you on the next one.